classic cars, it's hard because if I'm just going to make poop jokes the entire time, some of these winga dinga guys don't want to hear that. Uh, they, they just want to, they just want to want you to reference the big bopper and California cheeseburgers and that's it. I go to a car show. I have my car, I get the folding chair in the back and I put it right back and I read the newspaper and I just wait for the compliments to come out here. My name's Harry. I never eat the pickle, but I get angry if they don't give it to me. You know, that. <laughs> Welcome, it's time for another Talking About Cars with Randy Cardoon, that be me, Hot Rod Bob Beck, that be him, is with us, he's the guy waving, and uh, joining also today, my stepson Stan Fagan, and you'll see why in here in a couple of minutes, but also, our big guest today on this episode, it is a guy who you are likely well aware of if you ever watch car shows on YouTube. I mean, there are car shows, but this is a major domo car show. That's right. It's going to be a lot of fun to talk about regular car reviews. If you've never seen the show, you have to go on YouTube to check it out. In fact, it has, that page has 731,000 subscriptions. Only a mere 730,800 more than we do. So we're catching up. We've only been around for a couple of months. Joining us, the guru of the show, Brian is here with us. He is known as Mr. Regular. When we get 735,000 more subscriptions, I'm gonna start calling myself Mr. Talking. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, that Brian, works. welcome to the show. Welcome, uh, thank you. It's very good to be here. Thank you for being here. And I gotta tell you, you have such a unique approach and I'm sure you haven't heard that you have heard this before. You have such a unique approach to what you do. I mean, there are a lot of YouTube channels that talk about car reviews. Your position and your way of doing it is so scholarly. Is that a good Thanks. word? <laughs> I'll take that, thank you, yeah. And, and as the show goes, you know, I understand that it started on really a situation where you did a couple of them, you let it go, you did a few more, you let it go. And tell us about how the channel got started. Uh, it got started where, oh uh, gosh, it got started when I was in grad school, like the very first video, I was driving a 02 Toyota Echo. And uh, for those people watching this live, I got to remember, I got to go in my living room and turn off that one light in the background because I'm backlit right now. <laughs> uh, if I move my head over it, it gets the, the, the yeah, a little bit, camera yeah. adjust for it. Yeah. Anyway, sorry about that. Uh, I made a frustrate, I was frustrated that no one was making car reviews in the way that I wanted to watch them. So I went out with my camera and just ranted about my uh, Toyota Echo. Um, the video, in fact, just starts with me belching on camera. And I was excited that no one had picked regular car reviews. I'm like, awesome. I'm going to make a troll channel. You're coming to this. <laughs> you're going to think you're getting just a, a plain Jane motor week, John Davis style, no nonsense stuff about affordable commuter cars. And I'm just going to talk about my dick for 10 minutes. I'm like, <laughs> ha, I got you. So, mm. so that happened. I made a few of them. I, uh, I got a contract job to go live in Alaska uh, where I was a teacher up there. So the show just kind of stopped or rather the few videos that I made up until that point, it may have only been two of them. I think like the echo and my dad's 94 caravan. Um, and then I came back from Alaska back to Pennsylvania. I was trying to get a job during uh, trying to get a job teaching. And that was during uh, the Corbett administration, our gover governor at the time. This is me getting on a soapbox. Um, he wanted to slash the education budget 50%. Now, he said that so he could get the 20 that he wanted. Um, but he was just trying to balance the budget, which is something the previous governor could never do. Anyway, but I didn't know that's how he was going to. And I voted for the guy because I'm like, great. Because I remember times sitting in the faculty room with some of my teachers and I was a uh, substitute teacher and a student teacher, how they were just biting their nails. Like, we don't have a budget. We don't know what we're going to do. And that was Governor Casey's modus operandi. He would let the budget go until after. And then it, the budget would be settled like at four in the morning somewhere in Harrisburg, our state capital. 
Hmm. So anyway, so suffice it to say, we, do, we weren't working with a big uh, education budget when I moved back from PA. I was working a little logistics job and I started making these videos again to amuse myself. And then I, uh, my friend Tom, uh, who was on track to become a professor at the time, I think he was at that point, he was already accepted to postdoc work at University of Colorado at Boulder. So he, I was moaning to him and like, there's just no work in Pennsylvania right now. And he said, well, just do what you want then. I mean, if you want to make those car reviews, act like it's your job and don't care. Don't worry about making money right now. Just do them as if you're as if it's your job and you're already successful at it. Just like so, we're doing right now, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> so we, so, so I started doing that and then it, it took about only two months. Now I don't know if my story of making successful car videos is normal because uh, myself and then I brought along my friend Nick after I, a few videos came out and they were boom they were big hits the Miata one the Toyota Tacoma one this is back in I think 2012 or 2013 and so I went to my friend Nick who I was in grad school with and I said because that Nick at the time already wrote a book or two so um, I said Nick do you want to just write some lines for this Dodge of my Dodge Avenger uh, and so he just came up with the um, just came up with some lines and we're all of us are just laughing at this table. Like this is ridiculous. This is amazing. So, okay. Nick came along and then RCR kind of moved into a, a new phase at this point. Cause now the writing was split between two, uh, two people. And, uh, but we came into writing these reviews, um, after just doing uh, like educational research and, and, uh, comparative literature analysis and like okay awesome we don't have to cite anything <laughs> screw you apa citations i don't even have to spell things right it's all it's all vocals so that's right so we did that and then here we are six years later it's not too bad not too bad at all. And you, again, you are having a lot of people follow you. Very popular. You were talking about some of the videos and I've looked over some of them. I think Bob, you've looked over a few of them. Yeah. Uh, the most recent one that I looked at was, and this kind of gives you an idea. A lot of people are looking for, gee, does this car have pickup? Does this car do this? Does this car do that? You talked about the uh, recent one where you looked at the ambassador. Oh, and an AMC Ambassador and, Brome sedan. That's the right. Brownest you're, of the brown. And exactly. You're owed to brown. I think yeah. that was the classic. And that should tell if you haven't heard his stuff and seen his stuff, he will point on like a f part of the car and just go off on it. And the way he does it, again, so scholarly, so liter mm. you know, with the literature, like you're reading fine books. And he, and again, it's very enjoyable and a lot of fun. And it's completely different than anything we've ever seen. Oh, thanks. Yeah, the thing about that one car is I couldn't believe they continued the brown theme inside the speedometer. <laughs> like, it's the same fake walnut brown that's going over the dash, and then the speedometer is brown, and there's, there's nothing that isn't a, a shade or a flavor of brown on this car. It, it, there, there and I, like God, that thing sucked. I mean, I like classic cars. <laughs> I own a classic car. I have a 1960 Ford Falcon. I love it. Um, but this was the first classic car. It's like... Uh, uh, can I swear on this? Uh, or do you try prefer plays. not? I try, okay. I, it'll just give work for me because I'll have to edit okay. it and all that. Oh, okay. uh, this, this car is a punk of trash. It's, it's like I, I didn't feel special driving it. And the guy, uh, uh, Joe, who owned it, uh, he said, no one waves to you in an ambassador. <laughs> Even though it's a classic car, it's just, it just blends in. It's just this heap of sadness just <laughs> rolling down the road. What is it? 390 cubic inches or something or 360 cubic inches and all it makes is 174 horsepower yeah, yeah. torque whatever yeah, yeah. Um, was this the one similar to they used on adam 12 no that was the matador that was, that was matador. the matador the okay. ambassador was the big one that was the luxury brand so even to hear that and hear that assessment of that car is even funnier i think mm -hmm. So, yeah, and, and uh, some of the other ones, oh, Bob, by the way, you, you talked about your Falcon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Beck, tell him your Falcon story. Oh. Well, I, I've had a number of Falcons, and uh, my wife and I started Southern California Falcon Club nice. many years ago. So it's part of the national organization. There's actually a national Falcon Club. Oh, didn't know that. Yeah, and uh, we started SoCal Falcons. At one point in time, we had over 100 members. 
the club's still going strong. I'm not part of it anymore. Both of us have gotten rid of our Falcons, but mm. uh, they're fun cars. I had one in high school. I put a rumble seat in the trunk, uh, a roll cage, raised it up in the air, competition stripe across the hood. It couldn't get out of its own way, but it was oh. fun. <laughs> was, wasn't there one as well as a show we went to in Burbank? where it was a Falcon barbecue or something like that. And they, yeah, they, they, kinda, they, it was, they took the front end of a, 50, a 65, I think. It, it was the back of a, it was the 65 back end of a Ranchero yeah. towed by a Ranchero, but the back end, the trailer was the barbecue. So wherever the club goes, they make their own lunches. Nice. So it, it, it's fun. Uh, it, there's a, a group of guys. Some of them are race cars. Some of them are, are hot rotted. Some of them are just totally restored stock. All of them are slow, but they're fine. Yeah. <laughs> How cool is that, huh? And of course, you also did some other ones. The Imperial, where the hubcap fell off in the middle of a turn. I thought that was yeah. highly amusing. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know that really. they really do that, like from 70s action movies. It legitimately just threw its hubcap off. <laughs> <laughs> right you must went. Yeah, yeah. The, we, the wheels twist as you're going around a corner mm -hmm. hard. And with those cars, hard is a, a misnomer. But it, yeah. if you're going around a corner, yeah, the, the wheel flexes, the hubcap doesn't, and boom, it goes. It's yeah. You had credited something along the lines of the Miata videos that you did is kind of like a watershed moment for you. Mm. Yeah, well, people picked up on that one. It stayed on the top of, like, Reddit's R cars for, like, a week because – uh, mm. <laughs> I guess everybody has Miatas and they like them. It's a good uh, follower, and, yeah. And this yeah. one, I just poked fun about. I, just, I poked fun. Well, I was you grilling people on how they, you know, they just pat each other on the back, saying that they have the greatest sports car in the world. Nothing's more pure than this. And like we've heard it all before. So I just went further on that and tried to build up this person this guy person who has a miata and only likes things that are guaranteed to be liked <laughs> by everybody else no matter where they are the root for the yankees no matter what song is playing at a at, at someone's house they'll put it on dark side who's going to complain about that all their posts on facebook are about firefighters great you're just everything's great in your world isn't it freaking <laughs> miata driver yes it's the perfect combination. We're tired of hearing about this. And Miata is always the answer, isn't it? Just freaking buy a Miata. You're going to be happy. Do it, mod it, chop it, uh, raise it up, uh, make it an off-road machine, put nitrous on it, put, blow, put, a, put a coyote motor in it. Who cares? <laughs> it's a freaking Miata. The only one that I'm really excited about is the NB Mazda Speed, the only year it came out with a factory turbocharger. And I'm trying to find one of those. Now, um, what year was that? Oh boy, late '90s, and it may 90s. have been gone to like 2001. We could we could type it up on Wikipedia right now and find out about it. Um, but that was the only year they threw it. Uh, uh, they threw uh, Mazda threw a turbo on one of those. Which is, of course, it was '97. '97. Yeah. And Our speaking of that, they, they pop up on Bring a Trailer every now and then. And speaking of a guy who uh, may not root for the Yankees and may not root for the Cowboys, but because of you, because of your Mazda Vinata video, Bob yeah. one, Stan, give him your story. Ah, uh, okay. Well, I, I totally miss. I totally misunderstood the video. I didn't realize <laughs> it was supposed to be a satire. <laughs> uh, no, I, I watched it and I was like, sold. Uh, I, I have to go find one. Um, and you're talking you know, about the 95 one, right? Stan, you were talking yeah, about the, the video, 95? the 95 video. Cause he said, you know, you said it's like the best, uh, oh, it's the best. over and over and over again. And it was Brainwashing. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like there, there was no subtle marketing necessary. Like it was just uh. in your face. You should get this car. Uh, and, um, but I said, but that was, so my sister showed me that video initially and I just kind of, and that was when the fascination started with regular cars. Oh, okay. Um, and your channel in general. And then I saw the, cause what I had at the time was a 2016 Civic SI. Okay. Um, is that the really ridiculous pea green one? Or was that the No, other, no, uh, no. That was the blue one. Oh, okay. The blue, the blue one. one. Followed you the did, really yeah. ridiculous you, you did that one. more than once? No, no, no. The blue, the Civic Si was was fun, but it was like um, 
you know, and I remember watching the review, the RCR review, and it kind of being like, you're testing the waters on, on being a car person, you know, you're, you're, <laughs> now you're, now you're in it. And it was like, I am. And then I test drove a Miata and it was just, it was, it was the best. And so I went out and uh, yeah, it is. sold the Civic and, and, yeah. and got a Miata and um, found this great mechanic who helped me fix it up and, and, you know, look, took one look at the engine and the quarter of a million miles speedom- or odometer and said, your engine yeah. is cooked. Mm. This needs a new everything. Um, and so we kind of just rebuilt this Miata and, and there you um, go. he found an engine that had like 20,000 miles on it from a nice. model year Miata. And now it's with me in Jersey. Hell yeah. Um, the best yeah, California it's, it's, Miata. It's the most fun. I think. Oh, you have a California car? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's where I got it. It, it had spent a tour in California, no rust on it, nothing. And then. Good now move. Now I'm ruining it by exposing it to Jersey. Yes, yeah, that's, what, it, that's what we do. Get a get an Arizona car, get a California car, or a Florida car, or, <laughs> or a New Mexico back. car. It's Dude. like that. Eventually, I want I, I may replace our camera car, which is an 04 uh, Forester, with uh, either a newer Forester or uh, it would be a Rav Four, because uh, a Rav Four the rear window is electric and comes down, so I you know, I no longer have to film through glass. But Rav Fours or Toyotas, they hold their value. So if I wanted to spend money, it'd almost be easier to um, get a one-way ticket west and just buy a Rav Four out there and just have the fun of driving it home and having a guaranteed rust-free car. I mean, yeah, you, we have a few of them here. Yeah, you might yeah. find that they're they're less expensive out here because they were so much more popular. Ah, okay. So yeah, that, that's one thing to look at because I lived in the East for a long time and cars were actually more expensive hmm. in the East than they were here in California. And hmm. they last longer too. The paint hmm. goes away, but the car doesn't rust before your very eyes. So, nice. so Brian, did you realize that you had that power of brainwashing our youth to yeah. go buy a car <laughs> based on the way you did? I mean, did you study propaganda in, uh, in college? No, but I do have a minor in public relations, so so maybe that <laughs> worked go. a little bit. <laughs> Very good. So you had a chance to take the show, and I, and Bob and I have been kind of doing our own shows, and then we kind of melded to do Two Tired Productions a little while ago, which started this channel. But we've gone mostly in California. We've hit SEMA. We've gone to Barrett-Jackson. We've gone to some places. But you've taken your show to other countries, yeah. Uh, uh, talk a little bit about the New Zealand trip and talk a little bit about what it was like to drive their cars. Okay. Um, New Zealand, uh, they don't really have a whole lot of police and they're very reasonable down there with their speed limits because you, you would see like a back road around here would be 35 miles an hour down there, it would be 50 kilometers, which is what, like 45? Actually, that's not too bad of a difference. Or, yeah. or say like a two-lane state highway, maybe like 55. Theirs are 70 miles an hour. It's like their, their speed limits is the limit of safe speed on this road. Okay, don't go faster than this. Okay. And a lot of times, you'll find yourself on these roads, there's no way you can approach the speed limit. Um, you would need uh, like a Corolla FX16 with uh, sticky tires on it to get close to that. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a lot of fun. Uh, uh, So much fun I went back just as a personal trip, so I've been there twice. Um, uh, Driving their cars, you're going to have smaller displacements, but you're going to have a lot more turbos. Um, You're going to have... Uh, I wouldn't call them aggressive drivers. It's not uh, adversarial like New Jersey or, you know, Massachusetts or anything like that, but they expect a lot of you. I, there's this one road between these two towns, between um, Wellington and uh, Masterton, Greytown, Carterton, um, where to get between these two towns, you have to go over this mountain range. And it's sort of like, uh, if you're in Southern California, it's sort of like Mulholland for like a half an hour 
or the snake for a half an hour. It's just boom, 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 boom. And there's tractor trailers on this road. And the joke is that no matter how fast you are, um, you're not going to be faster than a tradie in a van. Uh, or, you know, the tradies, their word for like a uh, contractor, general contractor. Okay. So they're going to be, cause they've driven this road a million times and like a Toyota high ace or something like that, or, just, or, or a Hilux or something like that is just going to be right up on you the whole time, uh, going down this road. I had the pleasure of doing it in cars, uh, and on a zero motorcycle. So that was fun on electric, electric vehicles are heavily, heavily subsidized in New Zealand. So you're going to see tons of Nissan Leafs tons of BMW i3s. Teslas are just now getting there. Um, uh, but they work because um, New Zealand has tons and tons of wind power. So it's the kind of like electric, driving an electric, electrical car down there, like electric car down there, um, is just going to be pennies on the dollar compared to having uh, a gas. Because while we subsidize our gas, they tax their gas. I remember I filled like a BMW 5 Series, cost me $78. Um, like after the conversion, I was like, "Youch!" Um, oh, yeah. So you have a chance to drive some of these cars. Did you, when you were down there, did you drive any American-looking cars? But we're all set up with Australian right-hand drive and all that. You, do you mean like cars that came from the U.S. and were yeah. converted? To, no. Or, well, either converted or because they they actually brought some American looking cars down there and uh, like Ford and, and Chrysler at one point actually had American cars. The Falcon. Look, yeah, the Falcon they had down there, but they can, they can, they built it there. So they had it as right wheel, right hand drive. Right. I did drive a, like a two, it, it was neat driving a, a, like a 2008 Falcon. It was weird to see that name. It's like, this is a modern car. It's like, yes, it's a Ford Falcon. We, um, and the Australians and New Zealand claim, and probably rightfully so, more, more ownership of the Falcon than the U.S. I mean, when I had my Falcon and we uh, swapped the suspension, uh, we pulled those low, uh, lower control arms off, and they said made in Australia on them. I'm like, huh. And my Falcon came from, uh, uh, mine was the first year. Uh, it, was, it was an April build originally, and it, w it wasn't a Dearborn car, it was an Edison car, Edison assembly Church. in New Jersey. So it's an East Coast car. Um, of course, mu much of my Falcon doesn't remain anymore. It's like now the only thing left is a body. It's mostly a Fox body Mustang at this point. Um, <laughs> so you just start changing one thing and eventually you're changing like a million things on it. Uh -huh. uh, so if you drive my Falcon, it the, the front and rear in the car aren't on speaking terms because you have coilover <laughs> race suspension in the front and you have an 88 rear out of a 98 Explorer in the back. Wow. Uh, disc brakes. There you go. Yep. You got disc brakes all the way around. Yep. <laughs> and so the thing stops. I don't have any seatbelts in it yet because uh, it didn't come with them. Uh, I, we were able to keep the bench seat. Uh, we only had to cut the uh, transmission tunnel a little bit, like an inch. Uh, because I got the engine and transmission. I have, it's, it now has a, a 302. Technically, it's a 50HO out of a 93 T-Bird, but um, uh, we got rid of the, the fuel injection and, and all the EGR stuff, so, and now it just has a carburetor on it and metal bark intake. So it's, mo it's really a 302, not a 50 now. Um, and then it's running the AO, Ford's AOD transmission, that thing. I'm not running a C3 or anything like that. Uh, just because I got the transmission. And the AOD, uh, this is like dumb nerd Ford stuff. It's so weird because, you know, Ford, the AOD came out, I think, in the 80s or something like that. And that means that Ford never had an overdrive transmission until the 80s. They just never did it. Uh, they just dealt with like rear ends, like with like the ratios of like 280 or something like that. Mm -hmm. So finally, they had the AOD. That wasn't computer controlled. It's just like pressure and stuff. You don't control the overdrive at all. It, it just comes in when it wants to. And you could, you could click it out and hold it out and then it'll never go in. But, I, it, but, but it was a way to have an overdrive and not inject too much modern technology into a classic car to keep the feel sort of period correct although the front suspension totally kills that because now the thing tracks flat i lie 
it tracks flat initially when the front end goes into a corner. The back end is still leaf springs with an air rod. So the back end kind of will come around. You could take it on an off ramp kind of quick, but you got to remember that this, th th this body was never meant to flex like that. It, it, it has, it has some uh, uh, Mustang frame joiners in the rear to, uh, along the sides to join the front and rear uh, frames and air quotes uh, together. Um, it could really use a, a bracer in the front because the, uh, the shock towers are now gone. It's just a K member holding the whole front of the K. Now it's a big K member, but that's the only thing that's holding the front of the car together is down below. So eh, take it easy. Um, I, I saw a bunch of them for sale or I could have a guy just weld it up and put it into the bolt holes up there to hold everything together. But uh, apart from that, that's, that's about as aggressively as I drive that thing. Sorry, I got still, off on a tan. But it still looks like a Falcon. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Yep. All right. Yep. The only thing that that tells that that people will people see this and they think, oh, old car. And then some people say, what's up? Well, those wheels are way too big because we still run in dog dish uh, wheels, but they were made made by Wheeled Antiques. So then now it's a 17 inch wheel as opposed to I forget what it was originally. 13. 13. Hmm. So I have a big wheel and I have, uh, I think, 40 series tires on it. So I have modern tires and they're seven inches wide. But the rear tires, we didn't roll the rear fenders. Uh, they're, they're sucked in. So I have a staggered setup. So people kind of see that and they go, huh. And then the more astute, they hear that thing start up and I'm like, it shouldn't be making that noise. But I don't have dual dumps on it. I have a single. So it's four into one through a Walker quiet flow. So it, it, it'll rumble through the parking lot, but when you're, once it drops into overdrive, you don't hear anything. The loudest thing you hear is the wind. So I just, you just go down the road silently. And the only really time you can have fun with it is really at a, at a stop because I'm not running a, uh, I'm running the stock camshaft. So it pulls away pretty good up to about 50. And after that, the 5.0 is kind of falling on its face because the AOD is, is just kicking it. It's either it's keeping it in third or it's kicking it in the fourth. And there's no way to control second w with that transmission. It goes, you can click it down into low, but then, you know, you're floating valves and all that sort of, or, or sort of stuff. But it, it, it'd be more interesting if it was, if I had like a Tremec in it or something like that, but then you'd really need bucket seats because at that point, you know, you, well, you'd probably need it because now your shifter is in a weird place. Use the S10, the S10 transmission. What's the S10? The S10 T5. It puts the shifter further forward. It clears the seat. Oh, does it? That's yeah. what I did on my on my '63. I ran a bench seat, but with the S10 transmission, it okay. moves the shifter forward about uh, four or five inches. When you say, I, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. When and then I used a Hurst shifter. Okay. So it's bent to clear the uh, the seat as well. Okay. So when you're bringing it down to second and fourth gear. It ah. Clears. Nice. So when you say S10, are you referring to the Chevy pickup truck or is that a designation yeah. for Ford? Oh, no, it's, no, really it's that? an S10. Yeah. It's, the, uh, the T5 transmissions are all the same as far as the bolt pattern. Are they now? So it's, okay. it's, it's an easy swap. There's differences in input shafts and bearing sizes. And the, the one that's got the strongest bearing is actually the uh, Thunderbirds V6. Huh. But the S10 is a very popular swap in the Mustangs, the, uh, Falcons, the Mavericks, and Comets. Huh. It moves the shifter about three, four inches forward. I like it. I don't know if I'm going to cut mine up, but if I do another Falcon someday, maybe a convertible or, yeah. or uh, I don't know. I had my eye. It won't fit in my garage, but I have my eye on like a 62 um, Galaxy. In fact, I'm going to be, I'm going to review one in Pittsburgh, hopefully in the next few weeks, depend, weather permitting, of course. Um, I saw that at Ford Nationals at Carlisle, and I'm like, uh, that thing looks pretty nice. But, yeah. What, what got you into cars? What made you a car guy? My uncle owned a dealership uh, growing up, uh, and uh, it was a Chrysler dealership. And so I was a nephew's, uh, I was the owner's nephew. So I just got to come in and just run around. <laughs> so I would get inside all the cars and and open every cubby hole and, this was in the uh, so late 80s, early 90s. Uncle Bill had the place. He sold it early 2000s. Good time to get out of 
Chrysler out of that product line because I was during the Daimler uh, Daimler Benz years. So, uh, but I got to run around. Uh, my first car was a Dodge Neon, and then Uncle Bill just gave us that invoice, so that was nice. Um, although, uh, looking back, I think I would rather have had a Honda or something like that because um, I I beat on this uh, Neon, and it 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 wasn't. It was a second gen, which meant everything was stupid. Uh, and this was before they came out with the SRT4. So all I had was this two liter single jingle attached to this Mopar three speed automatic, dumb. And I was an idiot, so I put racing stripes on it. And by racing stripes, I meant pinstriping that I got at the gas station. I had a ruler and I just draped it over the hood and the roof and the trunk. It was a black car with chrome <laughs> stripes going over it. Uh, my bad taste didn't end there. It also had, um, this may have passed you by without noticing, but for a while in the early 2000s, uh, there was this trend to replace your windshield washer nozzles with ones with little LED lights in them. <laughs> no. no, you don't remember that. Oh, oh no. good thing. <laughs> yeah, they'd be selling them at AutoZone and, every, and everywhere. Um, that wasn't enough. Uh, I needed a second set of fog lights. So I got them from the yeah. same place. I got the pinstriping. That wasn't enough. I like Knight Rider. So let's get the Knight Rider scanner light going in the front of this thing. I'll pull a, I'll pull a plastic grill off the front, put the Knight Rider scanner light and Homer at the garage where I went to get my inspections and stuff. is like, Brian, you know, most of this stuff in the front of your car, you're not supposed to have, <laughs> you're not supposed to have red lights facing forward or blue lights facing forward. That's for cops and ambulances. Whatever you do, don't turn this on when you drive. I'm like, okay, Homer. Yeah, sure. Then I hit a deer, and that was the end of that car. Oh, would you get to keep the venison? No, I didn't kill it. It didn't kill the oh. deer, the idiot. Freaking hit it outside of Lake Winona. Freaking bounced off my car and hobbled into the woods. Now I'm left with the smashed up neon. And the guy at the wrecker said, you know, that's probably the best thing that could happen to a neon. So <laughs> the insurance money. Uh, that's how I ended up with that echo, um, which, uh, I drove for 10 years and I'll probably be in like 20 years. Like when I drive my Falcon around, I use it for like just daily stuff. I go grocery shopping and every now and again, I meet someone who had one of them and they want to talk for 20 minutes and sure, let's talk for 20 minutes. Tell me what it was like growing up with these cars where the dash is part of the car. It's like a structural piece. Everything's metal. Everybody dies. And, but, but they just have happy memories about this. I'm going to be that guy. If in like 20 years, when I see a freaking Toyota echo rolling around, it's like, I drove that thing for 10 years. It wouldn't die. I crashed it twice. And it, I had the front end ripped off of it. When I got into an accident in the snow, that was part of RCR for a while. And we wrecked that thing. Thing still wanted to go. It had all the, the, the condenser was hanging off. The radio was hanging off, smashed in. Thing still wanted to go. It was, ah, I'll tear up when I think of that thing. Like a Timex, yeah. huh? Like a what? Just like a Timex watch. Kept oh, yeah. Going and going and going. Yeah. I'm wearing one right now. When did I buy this? Like four years ago? Never changed the battery on this. <laughs> uh, so, Randy, yeah. Randy, you got no sound. Oh, Randy doesn't have any sound. Oh, well. It's normal for him. <laughs> okay. How about that? Am there I you back? go. All yeah, right. you're back. I must have uh, impulsively turned off my mute. All right, mm. here we go. So, so what's in your garage right now? What are you driving? And what is it like? I, I assume at this point, are you like this? Is your this with so many people and uh, subscribing to your show? Is this now your job actually doing the show? Yep. I have a script right here that I'll be writing after this. And uh, so, yeah, what's in my garage is an 04 Forester. That's the camera car in my daily. The 1960 Falcon, which is the screw around car. And uh, a 2008 Suzuki GSXF. Mm -hmm. Um sort of uh, that that bike is I, I made a whole video about it it's a failure it's a failure of a motorcycle it was it was a hit in europe and they brought it over here and no one bought it 
Um, it's really just a bandit wearing the dress of a Gixxer. So it looks fast and it really isn't. It's only meant to run on 87 octane. So, and they sold it as a sport cruiser, but they didn't offer any hard bags or panniers or anything. So I was like, oh, so I ended up, but, but I liked the riding position. It was a nice sort of, you know, sit up style riding position, but you're still on a sport bike ish. Mm -hmm. So I haven't really been riding it this summer that often. It's been kind of cool out here on the East Coast, but. Is there a car you've ever had that uh, you wish you could get back? Every now and again, I miss the MR2 that I bought because that was my dream car. Uh, a uh, Mark 1B, uh, first generation, second sort of phase of it. Um, but on the other hand, I don't really fit in it that well. Um, uh, Are you a tall I guy? I'm 5'10", 5'11". Yeah. Uh, I got big thighs, so sometimes it's tough. And I have super wide feet. So I couldn't comfortably drive that MR2 with shoes on. I'd either, either have to wear like really lightweight running shoes, like those mesh ones, or just drive in my socks. Because if I had my, you know, my, my, um, my big, just sort of like skateboard shoes or something like that, you, um, that with, with like wide soles, I, I'd be doing that freak out move where um, you hit the gas and, and the, the brake at the same time. Or like you're, you're the, 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 I hate um, it when that happens. Oh, uh, and it's, and it's like you're, everything gets flipped upside down because I had to come to a stop somewhere in Harrisburg. I was driving out to my friends. I was the only road trip I took in it. Um, it happened twice where I was just cruising on the turnpike with the uh, cruise. It had cruise control. That was pretty nice. 1988 I had cruise control. I had AC. Oh, that was great. Um, but so I'm just there with cruise control on. I see my exit coming up, pop the cruise control off. You know, uh, now it's just uh, decelerating. It was a manual. And I go to hit the brake and I'm hitting the brake, but I miss and I hit, I'm, I'm pressing in that space between the two pedals and I'm catching both of them. So the car is, you know, the engine's pulling on the brakes and I'm, I'm speeding up and I'm like, oh no. You know, the world is crashing. Everything doesn't make sense. Why isn't it slowing down? And immediately, like, I'm slowing this down for you. The whole process took, like, two seconds. Uh -huh. But I'm like, oh, uh, it's not slow. Press harder. And then it accelerates faster. And I'm like, uh, what, what, what's going to slow me down in here? Uh, emergency brake. So I'm yanking the emergency brake up. And that's I'm like, oh, okay, move your foot. But that was like a <sighs> freak out moment. Flop sweat. Yeah. Yep. Stan, if you have any questions, just go right out and ask if you have anything. So, um, I guess one thing that, like, you know, is kind of interesting that you do on your show is sometimes you take on sort of the persona of an author or, like, you know, in the 928 video, you did the Hunter S. Thompson mm -hmm. sort of style. I think you did one that you were, like, Thoreau or Emerson or, or one of those yeah. transcendentalist guys. And I'm just yeah. kind of Oh, good. Yep. Uh, that might have been Doug's what, like, Ferrari. <laughs> Where I was trying to do. Uh, sort of, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, just sort of like how do you how do you associate sort of a literary figure or something with a car video? Like how do you sort of come to that conclusion to say, oh, today I'm going to do it in the style of Hunter S. Thompson? Don't know uh, why. HS, just gonna... HST was easy because I'm a big fan. Um, but as far as the other people were, I took it. Uh, I did not, I just said, okay, we got this car and we have this important author. I don't know how they link up, but I'm just going to read some of this author's work <laughs> until I find something that works and then we'll slam it together. Like it's an English assignment and I don't care about the book and I don't care about this. It's like that one, like you've had assignments where it's like, I don't care about this. I'm just writing. I'm just trying to make this stupid point or it's like the teacher gives you an assignment like you can choose of any one of these topics and all the good ones are taken so you get like i don't know the american reconstructionist era great um <laughs> so and then you got to write about that so you just read enough that you could write the paper but in this case you know i can be funny doing it whereas for mr tumbleson you can't mm. How, How did you get? Go, go ahead, Bob. How did you get into a situation where you went from thrashing 
cars to how often, well, let me put it this way. How often do you do a review on a new, on a different car? Every week. Yep. So once a week you, you once. do a new vehicle. Mm -hmm. How do you choose? Laziness normally, uh, depending <laughs> like, uh, are you going to bring the car to me? Great. Yeah. Or if it's something I want to do, like I've been chasing that galaxy, like the 62 or 63 galaxy, um, for a while. And, and sometimes with classic cars, it's hard because if I'm just going to make poop jokes the entire time, some of these winga dinga guys don't want to hear that. Uh, they, they just want to, they just want to want you to reference the big bopper and California cheeseburgers and that's it. They, 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 blah, 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 blah. I go to a car <laughs> show. I have my car. I get the folding chair in the back and I put it right back and I read the newspaper and I just wait for the compliments to come out here. My <laughs> name's Harry. I never eat the pickle, but I get angry if they don't give it to me. You know, that. <laughs> <laughs> so... That and like the diesel bros. I haven't got a freaking, it's very hard for me to get my hands on a diesel pickup truck because those guys don't have any senses of humor. Even though they're, <laughs> even though the freaking spaced out wheels that they're driving around on their freaking Cheyenne. Oh, that's not, nah, that's too old. Uh, whatever Silverado that they have right now uh -huh. or, you know, Dodge <laughs> Cummins. Uh, very, very, very unfunny people, <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> And take, they take those trucks so seriously, especially when they put the exhaust coming up through the bed like they're driving a semi-truck. <laughs> uh, I'll bet they don't even have an air brake certification, those guys, or even a medical card. A come back to me truck when, driver. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow. Do you ever come out this uh, into California and look at and do cars? We did like once or twice. Uh, I was looking forward to come back at – you know, in the LA area, it's really hard to film because the cops are wise to what you're doing. And where's your permit? Where's your permit? Where's your permit? So mm -hmm. um, we did a we did a California tour that we called the Pacific Fister, where we started in LA and ended up in Portland. Uh, uh, so we filmed a bit uh, around Playa del Rey in the LA area and then went up did San Francisco. And then the San Francisco to Portland run that was that was a long, long to do that bit in one day. Uh, I, I had some time in San Diego, but I don't think I filmed anything there. I was just coming back. Oh, no, wait, that was, I was coming back from a ski trip. And then I met someone with that one, that one Saab that's really a cobalt. I forget where it was. It was the one time when Saab and Chevy had this thing going on and I forget what it mm. was. Uh, but I want to come back, but you know, the Rona right now makes it tough. Uh, that's true. But, I wanted to come back for like if Matt Farah ever, if he has like a party uh, or a grand opening to his uh, car. Uh, right, his new garage place. or whatever you call it. Yeah, storage yeah. place. Uh -huh. But even then, is he even allowed to, to have a party, right? Because we're in the second wave of it now. So who knows? Yeah, I yeah, think we've knows. gone back to, number, back to first wave now. How, right. is, how has this whole corona thing affected you? I don't know because I live in the Appalachian Mountains and uh, <laughs> it, it was just kind of, all right. Um, I, I amused myself by moving. So that killed, that killed about a month. So n the second it got warm out, I just started running every day and that kept me going. And then recently my gym opened back up again. And uh, so I just go at like noon when there's, I mean, there's, it's sparsely populated and at noon, like today when I rolled up, I was the only one there. So, um, you know, it wasn't even staffed. You just beep yourself in. Ah. So, and my one cafe where Nick and I write a lot, we can sit on the porch, but it's kind of okay because they've always had outdoor seating. So it doesn't feel different. So I got my cafe, I got my weight room and I can go out and ride a bicycle or motorcycle and drive the car. So nothing's Aside from the general vibe in the air, uh, my life hasn't changed a whole lot. Um, but I do, one thing I do miss is like it, all of last year we were traveling so much and that's where I really placed a lot of my happiness because I would look forward to these like balling on a budget trips. Like I'm just going to go back to New Zealand because I want to and I have the money to do it. Here I go. I'm just going to have fun for a month. You know what? I'm going to go visit some friends in Cincinnati. Why not? 
Am I going to fly first class? Eh, I'll cash in my points. Just do it on a regional trip. I'll just, it's, it's a two and a half hour flight. Let's see how many gin and, free gin and tonics I can drink on the way. <laughs> you know, it's like that. And then, and everything just kind of came crashing down mm -hmm. um, as far as, but, but that's where like, I'm like, oh, I live in the middle of nowhere, PA. My entire life is the gym, the cafe, and uh, oh, there's the, my friend from uh, Sunday school has a restaurant that I'd go to. So it's like the three things that keep me in this town, uh, that's it. That's my only real connection. But then, oh, but then there's the, um, the relationships you have with the garages where you don't have to, you can just kind of just go in. It's like they know you there. Um, where is the greatest cruise place in the Appalachians? You got, you got the Pagoda in Redding, Redding, Pennsylvania, which is this uh, very ornate uh, pagoda that looks strange in like the middle of Pennsylvania on the side of this mountain. If you look at some, uh, it, it shows up in a bunch of like M. Night Shyamalan posters. <laughs> Um, and they used to do, they still do hill climb races up there. So it's a nice windy road. You go up there. There's not a whole lot of parking. Um, it's the closest thing that we have to like a rock store or something like that. Um, it's, it's a beautiful drive and you're rewarded by this wonderful view of like the little valley and Reading below it. And you can look at our regional airport that has no carriers. <laughs> it's just kind of a, just a bunch of private, private planes that come, come here and there. Um, so that's a good road uh, to drive. Um, some people like cruising down to Philly and driving around Philly at like two in the morning because uh, that's pretty beautiful seeing the city. And I mean, I agree some of the times when I drive home from the Philly airport and you take, instead of going the blue route, going around the city, uh, you know, you go right through and, and under a little bit. And then that, that's a pretty one. But I, I mean, I, I'm not going to drive two hours down to Philly just to do that and then two hours back. Um, other good places to drive. Um, you can follow some of the state routes that go through the mountains. Uh, they're pretty neat. And then, or, or yeah, yeah. Follow back roads that go all the way down to Lancaster. And then that's, that's where you'll get held up sometimes behind like an Amish buggy, but it's, oh. it's, it's, it's part of the thing because they're back roads and they're in the middle of nowhere and it's just farmland, farmland, farmland. So uh -huh. that's pretty, that's, that's, that's a good place to go to. Have you ever done a road test of an Amish buggy? No, but Nick, the other half of RCR did review a horse once. There is an RCR horse review. He uh, went to horse his review. Yep. Mm -hmm. He went to his friends. He went, went to his uh, friends. He went to her farm. I forget her name. And she had like a bunch of horses and he like put a GoPro on the head and like rode this horse around the pasture. <laughs> I don't so, like horses. I think they're very frightening to me. It's like, oh, this thing's like a thousand, two thousand pounds, and it can kick through a door, and it has these gigantic nostrils that a hurricane <laughs> comes out of, and has flies around its eyes and flies around its butt. And why is this beautiful? And can I just go home? <laughs> very good. So, as we get a chance to close out here, I, I'm also curious: is there a car that you that's on your list aside from the '62 Ford that you want to? test drive but you haven't had a chance to yet yes i would like because this movie came out in the 90s when i was in high school amc pacer please give me a mirth mobile and in fact when that thing went up for sale at barrett jackson i could have afforded to buy it and have the real mirth mobile but okay that's one of them another one is going to be even tougher than a pacer because you see pacers pop up from time to time they made right. a bunch of them um is the dodge neon ACR. Um, you guys familiar with that thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those were made specifically for autocross. Well, mm -hmm. autocross maybe wasn't a thing, but for club yeah. racing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so autocrossing. The, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Best engine, best transmission, total stripper interior. But, and they were just made to be race and crash. So every blue moon, one of these things appears. And I, I'm, I have this whole thing when we finally get our hands on like a, a first gen neon it better be an acr i have this whole uh rant that i want to go on is like forget the viper forget the the ram or the srt ram or or even like whether the stuff they did with uh mitsubishi when it was more overt i 
-hmm. Like, I want to make this point that the, the neon was the pinnacle of Chrysler. Like, this is something that's, it's not a Honda Civic, but it's pretty gosh, gosh darn close. <laughs> they, they just drive great. But then again, it's rose colored glasses. It's just bare naked ladies from stunt. <laughs> uh, that album and uh it's uh, bringing down the horse by uh the wallflowers and and chubbawamba and tub thumping and all of that stuff embraced in one car that usually has like 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 some crazy graphics on it and that's how they came they're exciting fun little things most of them have had gasket problems um because um on most first gen dodge neons one of the um uh uh, the holes for the for for the, for the studs in the block, one of them wasn't drilled in far enough down. And I think if you're looking at the engine with the hood up, it's the one at eleven o'clock, uh, the one up in the corner. It's like a millimeter, two millimeters too shallow. So when your head bolt goes in, you think it's tightened. It isn't. You need to take that head bolt out when you do the head gasket go over your bench grinder or, you know, get your little whizzer and whiz, you know, give it a circ. A, can I say circumcision? Sure. <laughs> give it a little zip, yeah. zip right at the bottom. And Yikes. now it'll torque it. Now it'll torque correctly. But they'll all, when they all blow their head gaskets, if they blow it in that corner, it's because of that one stupid bolt. Thanks, Mopar. <laughs> Two words, yeah. blowing and circumcision in, in, in yeah, one yeah. entire mm. sentence. Thanks for adding mm. that. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Certainly. All right. So uh, once we're done here, we, of course, have our um, patrons run over to Patreon, all of you. So far, we're working on you. But when you get there, we will always ask a question of our guests. So we'll do a Patreon question before we let you go. Okay. Uh, and that's going to be coming up. So. In any case, thank you for taking the time to join us here on the show. No it's been a lot of fun. Uh, we've learned something, and I think even you learned something that we didn't know when we first started. Uh, yep. So, again, thanks to Stan, who's out in New Jersey. Thanks to Hot Rod Bob, who's out in beautiful Ventura County. I'm in La La Land, where I can't go anywhere because of the Aww. pandemic. And, uh, of course, Brian... That's right. Mr. Regular is out there. And, and good luck again to your uh, podcast. I mean, you're only, I, I was looking at all the regular um, YouTube uh, shows that deal with cars. And so far, aside from Jay Leno's Garage, you're kicking everybody's butt, which is not a bad oh, way to go. No, mm -hmm. you are. It's and, and I tell you, if Jay takes a couple days off, you'll catch up to him at the rate you're going. So <laughs> we'll see. That's it. Don't forget to listen to our audio podcast on radio.com and knx1070.com. Watch our video podcast, of course, which is probably what you're doing right now, on our new Two Tired Guys production channel. And, of course, that's uh, subscribe to both. Follow us on social media. Become a Two Tired Guys patron. Exclusive videos and get some swag. Until next time, I'm Randy. That's Hot Rod Bob, who suddenly disappeared. That's Stan Fagan. That's Brian. And we've been having fun talking about cars. We'll see you next time. This is a Two Tired Guys production.